Hi everyone, it's Sammy here and welcome to another speed build. So today I wanted to do a traditional cottage. Um, we see quite a lot of these in Guernsey, so I took my inspiration from a Guernsey cottage. Um, the traditional Guernsey cottages were two up, two down, so you'd have your two main rooms at the bottom and then two bedrooms at the top. So the way I've split this is a lounge and a kitchen diner downstairs and a little bathroom and upstairs you've got two bedrooms. Um, what I wanted to incorporate is a greenhouse in the back garden. Again, these are quite common and quite popular and quite traditional in, uh, in Guernsey. We don't have as many working greenhouses as we used to, so I thought I could keep one alive at least. So the Sims that I've created to live here are a are an elder husband and wife and their teenage granddaughter. Now, again, typical Guernsey couple, um, they are going to be gardeners. The husband is a gardener and I've made the wife to be a florist. Um, so again, they're going to be using the greenhouse to plant lots of flowers, lots of vegetables. It's all going to be living off the land. They're going to be cooking etc and I think I've actually made the wife I've given the wife the cook aspiration too so she's going to be cooking a lot with the homegrown produce that they have. Um, the teenage daughter wants to be an archaeologist so I'm going to play through some of the jungle adventure stuff because I haven't done that yet so um, yeah quite an exciting build for me I think. The uh, As you can see the living room quite again quite traditional I try to go for furniture that, you know, grandparents and the more elderly people would like. Sort of quite a lot of knickknacks around. Old style record player. Um, I really like the old paintings and the photo frames and things like that on the wall. So I think this would be quite nice for all ages, but particularly for the older generation. Equally with the kitchen, I wanted some nice tiles. I wanted the rustic flooring throughout the whole house to make it more consistent with the traditional cottage. I think the tradition side of it is quite important to me. Um, I really like old buildings and old houses, so this one was quite close to my heart, I think. I didn't want to go too much clutter this time. Um, I think, again, whilst, whilst my um, grandparent couple probably travelled, they've travelled a lot, they've got a lot of family maybe, um they've collected a few, few bits and bobs around i don't think they would be really um hoarders or um i don't think they'd really like the clutter around the house one thing i'm building out the back is a vine house again that's quite a traditional feature kind of like a conservatory but it's mainly where you do your hobbies um your workshop that kind of thing so that's going to house a lot of their hobbies also their laundry room so really inside, I didn't feel the need to use much clutter. Um, I got my rugs out again. I absolutely love rugs, as you'll know from my previous builds. Um, I just think rugs are great for dividing up rooms um, and showing off where the living space is, really. Um, in the kitchen, again, quite minimal clutter. Got to love a good rug in there. Um, I wanted the cake stand on the top of the fridge because, again, with the cooking aspiration, I imagine that the grandma is quite into feeding her whole family, um, a bit like mine. So mixing a few things around the dining room there, again, sort of china cabinet and display cabinets is again, I think grandparents quite like a lot. Um, it's just one of those things. I love these tiles. I think they're really fun. And they're quite old fashioned as well, so I think they go quite well. I wanted things a little bit mismatching, um, not so mismatched as my other builds. But again, I think I imagine this couple living in this house for quite some time. I think it's probably evolved with them. So some of the decorations, is some of the decor is probably quite old now. So what I actually wanted in this house was it to be a two storey but to have the upstairs in the eaves. Because very often in traditional, again, in traditional Guernsey cottages, 
you'd have rooms in the roof space. And I could not figure out how to do that. Um, so I ended up making it two storey plus a roof at first. And if I just freeze frame this for a second, this is the monstrosity that I ended up building at first. And I absolutely hated it. It looks like something that you could build out of a cereal box. I really didn't like it. Um, so what I did was I googled how to do dormer windows and rooms in the loft space. I found an amazing tutorial on Carl's Sims 4 guide. It's an excellent tutorial. It doesn't just go through dormer windows, it goes through lofts and uh, split levels and things like that. But um, I used it specifically for the dormer windows. So you can see here what I did was I got rid of the second floor. Um, I made a new second floor which was smaller than my ground floor. Unfortunately, what I had to do to make the space was I had to make the ground floor a lot bigger than I thought I wanted originally. Um, I had to expand it quite a bit because I needed three tiles um, either side of the top level. Um, and then I had a massive problem with stairs. I could not get the stairs in. So what I ended up doing was what you can see here. I did the, did the dormer windows um, like so. I did use the move object. Well, I always use the move objects cheat. So if you're going to use this at home, the dormer windows just look a lot better when you've got the move objects cheat enabled. I will say that. Um, then once I've done the upstairs, I actually had a massive, massive fail. I had totally decorated these two bedrooms without recording. I was really, really annoyed at myself. So what I've ended up showing you is I've just, I undid everything and I pressed the redo button a number of times. So this is what you're seeing now. Um, you're seeing me press the redo button. So all of the items are appearing seemingly out of nowhere. Um, I didn't want to have to do them all again on camera because it took me quite a long time. So, um, so this is what you're seeing now. One, again, another fail that I made in making the upstairs was that in trying to figure out how to do the windows, it wasn't letting me um, it wasn't letting me demolish the walls between the rooms and the dormer windows. I think it's because what I did was I created the whole of the upstairs as one room and then divided it off. I think that was a really big mistake because you'll see the walls on either side are blank because when I tried to put any wallpaper or paint on one room, it would completely go to the rest of the room. Even when I was trying to just do a single piece of the wall at the same time, um, I just could not get it to work and it absolutely did my head in. So I gave each room a feature wall on each of the gable ends. So you'll see the teenager room has got the sort of banana leaf print again because she's quite adventurous she wants to explore the jungles and become an archaeologist so I figured that was perfect for her um, and then the grandparents room and then the grandparents room I had a, another feature wall so that's what I ended up with it looks okay um, it's not perfect but again I still think the rooms really complement the personalities of the sims which is what I was trying to get to anyway so it's not all lost. So next I decided to build a vine house out the back. Um, again this is quite traditional. It's specifically Victorian I believe. The Victorians were very into their vine houses and you'll see that quite a lot on old traditional Guernsey farmhouses and cottages. It's essentially what we would call a conservatory these days but it's not really for that. It's more for in this case the hobbies the it's for potting your plants to go in the greenhouse uh, growing your saplings in this case I've also made it their laundry room um, and their hobby room so we've got we've got the grand's um, flower arranging table we've got the granddaughter's archaeology table and we've got the grandpa's woodworking table we've also got the laundry area which is quite self-explanatory um, I love the laundry pack, but I tend to use it quite a lot. So in all of my builds, it will pretty much look the same just because I love it so much. Um, I also wanted this really big shelving unit, which I think is perfect. Again, um, in the vine house, just a little bit of everything to keep them going. Um, so yeah, I've got some boxes and crates and things like that. 
um, probably the closest room to being a garage. Even though we've got the big greenhouse out the back, which is coming soon, um, this is the kind of, this is more living area. Um, um, again, adding laundry baskets so that I can actually wash their clothes. Forgot about that earlier. Um, that seems to be a bit of a trait of mine. I get so excited about the bills and then I just completely forget really fundamental things. Um, back in The Sims 1, I always used to forget to give them a phone because back in those days, you couldn't speak to anybody unless you put a phone in the house. Uh, those were the days. Um, traditionally, you would use this a bit like a potting shed. You'd start off all of your growing here before you then move it into the bigger greenhouse. Um, I tried to get some flower boxes on the side, but it really blocked out the light, which I was a bit disappointed about. Um, but hey ho, never mind. Um, again, adding lots of floral features there. I thought it looked quite pretty. Right, now on to the big greenhouse itself. Picking windows was a bit tricky. Um, what I really wanted to be a bit more authentic for a greenhouse was windows with lots of different panes in them. Because again, window panes in greenhouses are quite small, but could not get anything that looked truly like a greenhouse. I used the same windows that I used for the fine house. I think it looks quite nice because it's consistent with the rest of the house. So that's quite nice. Um, these doors I really like. Again, they're quite genuine. Um, and on the roof, I love the glass roofs in this game. I think they're really pretty. So couldn't wait to get one of those in. Um, and yeah, annoyingly, you can't put any glass on the actual root on the eaves of the roof. I added these big panels, which I thought actually looked the part. They kind of look like panes of glass. So I thought those would look really nice. And I'm really pleased with how they came out, actually. Um, inside the greenhouse, I made it a complete dirt floor. I experimented with grass and gravel and paving stones, and it just didn't really work. It didn't really work anything like the the dirt ground. I thought it was pretty genuine which is nice so out the back of the greenhouse we have a little working area we have bees we have two beehives um, and we have a little a little table there where they can actually you know maybe do some more potting or um, harvest the honey from the bees so we've got some jars there again a few crates and things like that so just bits and pieces where they do stuff um, which is isn't growing so we've got the rest of the greenhouse to do the growing um, and then the back of the greenhouse to all sort of process it and sort it out there. So um, the outside, I wanted to make it quite leafy, um, get lots of trees in there. But I just really just couldn't get my head around it. So, you know, these bushes looked great, but then they kept disappearing and I didn't really like it. So I ended up making the fencing a lot smaller, just keeping it to the floor plan of the house, um, putting some paving stones in there again I thought that looked really cute because then I realized that my sims didn't really have anywhere outside to sit so I thought I'd give them a nice little seating area there and some lights so all extremely cute so yeah really pleased with how this house came out I'm going to really enjoy playing with my sims here um, just added a few lights around the greenhouse for a bit of atmosphere I might make it a little bit cuter um, but yeah, really pleased with this one and uh, looking forward to getting stuck in with these Sims. And it's kind of a house that I want to live in. Um, I think it's quite cute. Really pleased with how the dormer windows came out. I can't believe that I've spent so long without using dormer windows because it gave me the exact, um, exact feel that I wanted. So thank you, Carl. Really appreciate it. Um, so yeah, just got a couple of cute shots of the inside. Um, you can see lots of little details there. Um, but yeah, I will try and upload to the gallery if I can and on my Twitter. Don't forget to come by and say hi and I will see you next time.